When learning to stage pressure injuries or pressure ulcers, it's very important to be able to discern the level of tissue destruction that's involved. So what I like to use to give a visual representation are grapefruits. So if we start with a stage one pressure injury, we know that the skin is still intact, but it will present with an erythema or a redness that is non-blanchable, meaning if I press on this, you will not see the blood evacuate that area and then reperfuse, meaning it'll turn white and then reperfuse red again. The trick with this, however, is in patients with non-Caucasian skin, what we need to look for is subtle changes in their natural skin tone. We will see what's called a dyschromia or a darkening of their skin tone. So don't be fooled looking for erythema in darker complected patients. But again, a stage one is intact skin with non-blanchable erythema or a dyschromia. Stage two now is actually disrupted the skin barrier function. You can see as represented here that the tissue, which is supposed to be represented of the epidermis, has now been removed. We've used a zester. But basically what you can see is what would be the papillary layer of the dermis. So this is still considered a partial thickness injury because it has partially invaded the skin, but it's only removed or invaded the epidermis and that first layer of the dermis, the papillary layer. When we go on to a stage three and even a stage four or deep tissue injury, we are now talking about full thickness pressure injuries, again, because of the levels of tissue involved. So in a stage three, you can quickly see the difference from how the stage two presented. Here, we have full involvement of the epidermis, but now we have invaded both the papillary and the reticular layer of the dermis into, but not through, the subcutaneous tissue layer as represented here by this fibrous tissue of the grapefruit. So again, this is a full thickness injury because it has fully invaded the epidermis and the dermis, but it has not gone into deeper tissue structures. When we invade deeper tissue structures, such as this representation, this is very similar to how a stage four pressure injury will present. And what you can see again is you have epidermal involvement, also the papillary and the reticular layer of the dermis. We have gone through and extended past the subcutaneous tissue and now we are in deep tissue structures. This could be muscle, bone, tendon, ligament, even metal if patients have had surgery. So this is a very uh, deep injury. This is something that needs to be readily addressed and we need to protect these tissues to keep them viable. The other aspect that we must consider with pressure injuries is the elusive deep tissue injury. And again, what you will see when these first evolve is intact skin, but it will present with a purple or a dark purple-red discoloration of that tissue. But even though it won't blanch, what you will note, which is different, is the tissue consistency. So it's very important not just to rely on your visual assessment skills in looking at pressure injuries, but to palpate those tissues too. Because with deep tissue injury, you will often feel extensive tissue consistency changes. It could be cooler, warmer, it could be boggy, it could be hard. It's not going to feel like normal tissue. And with pressure injury, the pathophysiology, we have to remember, happens down at the bony tissue interface. When perfusion is not allowed to uh, deliver oxygen and nutrients to those structures, muscle, tendon, bone, all of those things die relatively quickly. They necrose. So these are actually myocutaneous infarctions. And the reason being that the skin tends to be the last thing that tends to uh, become involved is skin has the highest resistance to hypoxia. So it's very important to be able to recognize the level of tissue involvement so you can adequately stage pressure injuries.